everyone, my name is Alan, founder and consultant at Fornow Marketing, and welcome to Braze for Technical Marketers. Today, we're going to talk about how to send an internal message based on a user's trigger. So by, by internal message, I mean an email to any internal email address, maybe a customer support email address or any other internal email address. Um, and then it can even be actually a Slack message to a private channel you have set up internally. And then it will be based um, on the user's action or an event that happens to a user. So maybe the team has something you want to keep track of based on users performing certain actions or users going through a certain action. And we will set up a Braze campaign um, to keep us alerted internally whenever that happens. Let's get started. So any email that gets sent out of Braze, uh, for any email address to receive that email, they need to be a user profile in Braze. And we are going to uh, talk about today's tutorial, assuming we're going with the email route. So first we need to create a user profile containing this email address that we want to receive the internal email. And I have what's called a user's track um, external ID and email template. Um, I will be happy to share the code below, but I'm gonna go ahead and open that. And the blurred portion includes our API key. So that is blurred for security. Um, but the profile that has the email address doesn't even really need to be a profile with an external ID. It can be a user alias profile as well. Um, just to keep it simple, I will go ahead and give it an external ID internal. And then let's say that this is the email address that we want to send the email to whenever users perform a certain action. So if I go ahead and click test and send test, this should successfully create that user profile. Not that one, we're gonna search for internal. So this should successfully create the user profile that will that now holds the email address that, and that makes it possible for Brace to send email to this profile. So we're gonna first create the email that gets sent to the email address that we just looked at. We're actually gonna need to create two campaigns for this use case, and this is the first one. Um, so I've gone ahead and named it internal email based on user action slash event, and then gave it a subject of internal test. And then the other cool thing we could do is in this email, we can even include some data or some properties of the user who triggered this email. Um, and we will not be using the, uh, the standard custom attribute or basic attributes, but we will have to include these parameters as API trigger properties. So the two things I included is first the user's email, and then let me show us how I got there. So I clicked the blue plus sign, and then it will not be a default attribute, but this will, uh, all the data about the user will be passed along as API trigger properties. And we're gonna have to name one of the fields email, but insert personalization there. And then the other value that I wanted to include is the value of the user's custom attribute that changed. Um, so let's assume that we are going to trigger the user event that we're looking for is a change in custom attribute. Um, and we wanna include what did it change to? Um, so then what I did was also added the plus sign, API trigger properties, I named it custom attribute new value. Then the only thing we may need to keep in mind is maybe adding a small um, up to five minute delay in between the trigger and the send. So we give Braze enough time to actually make that custom attribute change before um, including that value inside the email. Uh, and then the schedule delivery is going to be API triggered. So if you choose API triggered, uh, it gives us the campaign ID, which we will need in just a minute. So anytime this campaign receives a ping or a trigger to this ID, that is the only time that this email will be sent. The target audiences, I chose external user ID equals internal because the only person, the only user profile that needs to receive this email is this one, which also means that the only email address that will receive this email is this internal email address right here. Don't forget to scroll down and uncheck control group so we can send one all 100%. Um, no conversion events needed for that one. And then let's go ahead and update and launch the campaign. And once again, uh, we can have peace of mind launching that campaign because it's an API triggered campaign even though we hit launch, it's not going to send any emails until that campaign ID is set up elsewhere. And that, you know, maybe there's a script or some logic that's pinging that campaign ID. So until that is set up, uh, even if we go ahead and launch this campaign, this will not be sending any messages. 
Awesome. So now that we have the actual email set up, we're going to have to set up another campaign. And this one's going to be a webhook campaign that is triggered by the user's action or the event. And this webhook campaign is kind of the communicator or the bridge or the connector in between the user profile and then um, the rece receiving email address. So I'm going to create a webhook campaign this time, and I will be naming this one user action slash event. Um, arrow trigger internal message. And I have another webhook template, which uh, once again, I will be sharing below. But this one is going to be called campaigns trigger send. So this API endpoint is what allows us to send API triggered campaigns. There's also a schedule endpoint, which we can time when to send later. Um, but for now, we want to send it right away. I'll go ahead and click on this one. And I'm blurring my API key once again. If I'm being really safe, I also should not be exposing this campaign ID either, but I will be archiving this campaign afterwards. And I did want to show us the uh, webhook body. So here it is. So this campaign ID is exactly the campaign ID that we have set up for the actual email address. Um, whoops, it's actually not. So let's go ahead and copy that. So this is the campaign ID, the right campaign ID uh, that we got from the email that we just built. So we are going to replace this ID with a new one. So this means that whenever this endpoint is triggered, we are only going to be uh, triggering this specific campaign. And then the key thing to keep in mind is under our recipients uh, field, we are going to hard code our external user ID to internal. And this isn't uh, meaning that this is only an internal send. This is actually the external ID of the internal user profile that we'll be sending to. Uh, maybe I should have made it a little bit more clear and have written internal one, two, three. But the idea is that we are sending to a specific external user ID, which happens to be called internal in our situation, in our case. So that's why we're sending to internal. And then the trigger property. So this is where um, the parameters come into play. So let's say we actually want to include the triggering user's email address um, inside our receiving email. So we can create a field called email, and that can be uh, the braze liquid, um, you know, standard attribute email address. And then the other one that we wanted to include, I may have to go back and edit and see what we named it exactly. The naming matters exactly here. Um, so we called it custom attribute new value. So the other one we're going to include is custom attribute new value. And let's say that this email gets triggered. Um, we're skipping steps here real quick, but let's say that this email gets triggered when a user's custom attribute value changes. Um, and then we have a custom attribute called promo. So promo code, so any new value. So when a user's um, promo code that is on their user profile changes to any new value, that is what will trigger this campaign. And we will go ahead and add a five minute uh, delay, like I mentioned, uh, to avoid any race conditions so that we give Braze enough time to log this change in custom attribute. And then promo code will be the second parameter that we pass along here. So um, I put a comma after the email, add a new trigger property called custom attribute new value. And then we will grab that using the custom attribute syntax. So just to show us what I did, uh, put it in between quotes, add, add personalization, custom attribute. Let's look for the user's actual promo code value. Copy that, and I'm going to insert it in between the quotes. So these are the uh, you know personal data that I'm passing along with the user trigger, and then that can be included inside the email. Actually, that part's already set up. It is already set up in our um, actual email, as you can see right here. All right, so we are ready to um, send this, uh, launch this email. So once again, it's really only triggered uh, when changing custom attribute promo code is any new value. So we can go ahead and uh, launch this one. This one I will send to all users. So any users, uh, you know, can trigger that internal list. That can look different for you if you're only looking for a specific uh, subset of your user base. All right, so I have gone ahead and launched that campaign. Uh, the webhook is live as well as the actual email is live as well. And here's how I'm going to test this. So I am going to use another webhook just to update my user profile. 
So I'm going to be updating this user profile, which is the one that we saw over here. And I'm going to give it a new promo code. So the promo code is now going to be ABCDEFG. I'm going to go ahead and test, send test. Whoops, there's an issue here. Of course, maybe we had one too many brackets. So let's do a little bit of cleaning up. Um, it looks like I didn't fully delete all the previous syntax. Okay, we should be good here. Let's try sending the test again. Awesome, 201 created. And if we navigate to our user profile and wait for that promo code to change. Okay, so that just changed, which means our campaign should have been triggered. So this is a campaign that should have been triggered uh, based on change in custom attribute. Um, because we put the five minute delay, we may not see any updates on the analytics uh, for another five minutes. So I will check back in five minutes. All right, it has been five minutes, just refreshed, got the one in message sent. I'm about to check my email to see an email from no reply, internal test, user's email, value the user's custom attribute that changed. Awesome, so that is exactly the uh, custom attribute, the new promo code that we logged. That is the user's email address. Uh, maybe I should have added a line break for uh, better visuals, but it has been done, uh, successfully tested, and that is how we set up today's use case. Please let me know if you have any questions. Thank you for watching and see you next time.